I have to say, over the course of construction out here, there's certain places that I've found particularly warm and cozy. For instance, this little studio space, it's a tiny area, only about 14 by 12 square feet, but I can't wait to build some fires in there in the winter. And I know that it's a favorite place for Lucky and Angel. You know, having a small intimate space that's all your own is very important. Sherry Shin has come up with a fundraiser that focuses on this idea of miniature houses for children. We're looking at uh, Cozyville, actually. This is Kids Cozy Cottages, our fifth annual event, and our first year to have it at the Little Rock Zoo. And so it, we're delighted that we're having it outside this year, and we've opened it to so many more children this way. Arkansas Respiratory Health uh, has several programs to, uh, to fight lung disease. Each of these houses will be auctioned off to individual donors and we will deliver them and place them in uh, the backyards of some lucky child. <laughs> well, first and foremost, it has to be safe for children. We, we require that. All of the, the architects, the builders, the uh, interior designers, and the landscape designers donate their time and their materials to us at no charge. The roofers, the framers, the flooring people, everyone involved donates their time. This is such a kid-friendly project and it's always so much fun for us to do this. And we love to take the, take the child to their fantasy, whether it's Hansel and Gretel's gingerbread house down at the very end. It, every child under five loved that house. They thought it was just perfect for them. And the next one is the Little Red School House. You'll see right beside it. It's a little smaller and it's just beautifully decorated inside just with all the primary colors and it's perfect. The next one is the Ozark Log Cabin and it's just, it, it's fantastic inside. Then we have what we call the Diva House and it's definitely for a little girl. And then after that, we have the members only lodge and it's, it was the children's favorite this year. And then the last one we have is, is uh, called Frog Wars and it's a Harry Potter style. Uh, each child has their own little make-believe world and, and it's so much fun to see those little eyes light up when they walk into those little houses and just see how, how special they are. <laughs> If you're like me, you have an interest in where your foods come from. Well, if you also have an interest in history, you know it goes way back and it started on a vessel just like this. Well, Morgan the Nina is quite a vessel. Well, thank you, she's a great ship. We've been sailing her for about 14 years. Actually, how big is this ship? On the deck, she's about 68 feet and overall almost 90 feet. She's 18 feet wide, she's seven feet deep in the water and weighs close to 100 tons. And when Columbus and his crew uh, set sail, uh, they really had no, they, they were thinking they were going to India, or didn't they? They were going for the spices in the Far East. Um, there's some debate whether Columbus knew that Brazil existed. They thought he, maybe he'd had an unauthorized voyage and found Brazil, but that was kept quiet. So it was all about economy. It was all about business yeah, and, yeah. And, and Columbus's share of the profits or whatever was 10% of all the goods found on his voyages. So these voyages over, were, were they were no party. This was tough going. It was extremely hard going for them. Uh, water was rancid. They had a little bit of port wine to make the water uh, taste better. They only had livestock on board, and that ran out. Uh, 40 people on board usually at one time. Uh, when they got to the New World, the Indian tribes gave them uh, the vi vitamin C necessary for uh, conquering scurvy. So that would have been in the form of vegetables uh, known to the New World, corn and squash and pumpkins and potatoes and tomatoes, all these things that uh, we just take for granted. The Europeans, to that point, had never seen these things before. I mean, even turkeys. All right, that's true, that's true. I mean, it opened up uh, the palate in the, in the old world and uh, it was very important. What is the mission of the Nina? The Nina's mission is educational. Uh, for the last 14 years, she's been sailing to over 600 ports. We do uh, a lot of schools and teachers come on board, uh, about a million in total so far. And then we've had about a million to two million uh, families and individuals tour. She tours about 50 weeks of the year and uh, usually about 30 ports per year. 
you always sail with the Spanish flag and the American flag. Well, she's a Brazilian boat uh, built in Brazil, and so we're, we're dual flag. When we're outside the United States, we fly the Brazilian flag, and we're also registered in the United States. Mm -hmm.